Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Master Class Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Tom Sharp, leadership expert for entrepreneurs, and he talks about AI productivity and leadership for entrepreneurs. And he has been doing this over the last two decades. He has inspired, trained, and coached thousands of leaders in a small European country, and now he's based in the big capital in the big, big United States of America. Welcome to the show, Tom. Thank you so much, Jay. Thanks for having uh, me, and I'm looking forward to a great conversation. Absolutely, absolutely. You are the master for today, and I'm sure a lot of people will be able to benefit from your expertise, especially on leadership, how leadership leaders can become effective in whatever they do. So that's the person you are. So my first question to you, uh, Tom, is to understand when you talk about leadership, effective leadership, these are, you can say, the good times and not so good times in terms of, uh, you know, uh, in terms of leadership. A lot of questions are there on leadership. And we talk, if we talk about the great resignation, we talk about quite quitting. And there is also this talk about you know, automating the CEO. In fact, one, if I remember, one Hong Kong company, uh, they have already executed this, and this automated CEO is uh, is is in more likely likeliness is doing better than a normal CEO would. So, amidst this time, how would you like to bring back the leadership into into reckoning, into discussion, and talk about effective leadership? What is effective leadership in these times? Well. I believe that leadership is as simple as helping people to come together and work towards a common goal. And it's easy as that, helping people to work together. On the other hand, working together can be really complicated and can be re like, like when you are running a country, you help people to, to work together, but that's entirely different than running a small hospital, which is entirely different from running a small company. So this leadership is on all levels. And yes, I do believe that large parts of leadership are going to be affected by the rise of artificial intelligence. I'm not so sure that AI is going to take away all leadership in the world, but we'll have to see. Maybe it does. Right, right. But that is for the future right now. There is a whole lot of debate on the AI itself, you know, as Perhaps more questions about leadership or as many questions about leadership and uh, even on the AI itself. Exactly that we should pause, think, see where it is going and then we see whether we want to go behind it or we not need to stop it. So we will leave the AI part for the future. But let us talk about the practical part of, of this discussion is that firstly, I would like to understand you talk about that each entrepreneur should have at least two or three mobile phones amidst the time when you are when there is talk about work life balance and you know and 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 getting your time back from the hectic schedules that a leader have why do you want to increase their load and talk about two three mobile phones let's discuss this at this moment yeah that's a great question i actually do believe that i'm using two or three mobile phones and and telling my clients that i need to buy another phone Exactly for those reasons that you just mentioned, uh, Ajay. So in my mind, I don't know about you, but I feel that most leaders, most entrepreneurs are really creative people. We may not be painting or, or playing the piano, but we are creative in our mind, in the way that we think through, like running a business is a pretty complex endeavor, right? You, there's so much you need to take care of. It's, it's the, your business model, your branding, your marketing, uh, but then also the delivery, everything there's so much going on and when i try to step away from my business i try to spend some time with my friends and family and maybe recharge and recuperate a little bit as soon as my f uh, i get a text message or a whatsapp message on my phone that mentions something that's going on in my business i'm completely out of my home zone again I'm back into my business. And the interesting thing is that for many entrepreneurs, they think more about their business. They plan their business much better than they are planning their personal life, which means that their personal life tends to get a little bit boring 
And so as soon as they, as this one hook enters their subconscious mind, they, they get drawn in all, all these directions thinking about their business. So my first phone, I shared this number with everybody. And then at some point in time, I realized I'll need another one. And I bought another phone and I called this my family phone. And nobody has this number except for my immediate family. But now you are telling the world that you have a, another phone which you have not given to them. I have a business phone number and, <laughs> and my clients have this number. This is where I message with them. This is where they can call me if they want to. But as soon as my workday is over, I switch it off. In the weekends, it's off. And that really made a tremendous difference in my life because I could basically really unplug from my business at the times where I wanted to be with my family. Right. Right, Tom. So, in terms of effective leadership, yes. let's get, get back to those uh, tips and tricks and tools and techniques. How can a leader become more effective uh, in terms of what are the tips and tools that you talk about that can make them more effective? And do you mean by effective more productive for the company or for himself? How does it work? I... I Two, three things at the same time, but since you are the master, I thought, why not ask them together so that you can answer them at your own pace? So if people are taking notes, they are going to find out that I won't answer all your questions right away. And, and, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> then I go through the ice, you know, but I basically believe that effectiveness in my mind is what uh, Stephen Covey talked about. You want to have the ladder against the right wall, the wall that you actually want to scale. So if you are really busy and you are not achieving your goals, you are climbing the ladder fa very fast, but it's, it's against the wrong wall. That's not what I would call productivity or effectiveness. So that's a, an important point in my mind. You want to work towards the goals that you actually set for yourself. And if you are a leader in a larger corporation, that might be the goals that your boss sets for you. Effectiveness is also always according to the goals that you set. I believe that when you have the right people in the right place, those goals align. So let's not just talk about leaders, but also about employees. If I have a team member in my team and she really enjoys doing administrative work, I cannot believe this, but there are people who really enjoy to know day by day by day by day what they are going to do. They love the, the, the structured plans. They love to know what they're up against. And so I have this one person in my team. She really enjoys the bookkeeping. There's no way in my mind that you could get me to enjoy that work, but she thoroughly enjoys that work. So if she does her work really well, she is happy, her goals are met, I am happy, the goals of my team are met. And I believe that's the same for leaders. So if you want to be really effective, you need to figure out a way, we sometimes call it um, uh, vectors, where it's basically like two arrows. If the, arrows, if the arrow of the team points upwards and my arrow points in another direction, we are not going to be a good combination of a team and a leader. But if our arrows kind of overlap, or almost point in the right direction, then we should be good, right? Okay. Okay. So a leader has to find out exactly, you know, who loves what and accordingly delegate work. But I think this is a really important thing because many leaders do not really, really spend a lot of time f finding the right people for their team. Be honest. There's like huge corporations have HR, uh, departments, small companies, you have to do it by yourself or you hire uh, uh, another agency to find people for you. But how many leaders are really, really spending the time to find the absolute correct fit between a new p um, team member and their job role? That's not, that's not happening a lot of the time. I'm working with a ton of leaders, entrepreneurial leaders, where I can help them to figure out, is this new person really the best fit for the job because if they are the right fit now everybody is happy right right so i was just trying to understand for a leader firstly uh how does it work what how can he 
effectively put into effect the effective leadership part uh, in terms of does is it about keeping mobile phones and compartmentalizing your life is it about putting the right people on to the jobs that they love is the world so you I mean, so easy that a leader will be able to manage all these things in 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 today's time how does he put all these things into practice how does he focus on the larger aspects of say profit or the vision of the company how does he do that then in terms of finding the a players in his team where does this effective leadership actually rely with whom maximum what is it dependent on is it on the leader himself or herself is it on the type of people he delegates work is he on the type of players or a players that he chooses for the team or is it the type of mobile phones that he keeps how how does it how does it work here i'm just trying to figure out it's like the step by step method that i'm trying to understand from a leader's point of view you're so totally right on all of this jay it's yes the an my answer is yes 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 and yes so basically my in, in my opinion most entrepreneurial leaders that i meet they have never had any training in leadership so they they start a company the company becomes uh, successful so they need team members they add uh, they find team members and they st just start leading them which is basically what happens in the corporate world a lot as well so most people who are professional leaders have never had any training in leadership which is weird because now we are making all the same mistakes that everybody else has made as well <laughs> kind of kind of a waste in my mind but that's how i started as well so i threw myself into the deep end i thought i can run a team no problem i just add a couple of people to my team and they can take over work that i'm doing myself right now everybody have it well it doesn't work that way because exactly as what you're saying it's a relatively complex environment this is this is running a team running a business is much more complex than i don't know air traffic control or something like that it, it's, it may not be rocket science, but it's, it's pretty complex. So what you need to do is figure out who you are. Because if you try to run a team, not from the core of who you yourself are, you're already wasting a ton of energy and a ton of time, and, it, and, and it's not going to work well. You, you cannot be a copycat of yourself. You need to be yourself if you want to be a great leader. And yes, then you need to know what team members you, you need. You need to, in my mind, I help people to create a dream org chart where they figure out in two years time, how would my ideal team look? For each role, you figure out the scorecard, the, the person that you need for that specific type of job. Then you need to figure out how do I delegate tasks to these people? How do I make sure that they know what to do, that they have the responsibility, that, I, that if they start making mistakes, I don't correct them at every turn because these are not little children. I need to take them seriously and they will make mistakes just as I make mistakes all the time. But then I need to verify that they are actually learning from the mistakes that they are making. And how can I help them to take on more responsibility and more and more and more? I have like a 10 step ladder where you grow in responsibility every time. I want people to be at level five or seven instead of hanging around at level one or two now we need to figure out how do i monitor what they are spending their time on how do i help them make sure that they're not overworking all the time because if every week they put in 10 more hours i'm not leading them correctly so we need to review we need to do quality control we need to make sure that all this is very efficient because it become if it becomes a whole lot of administration I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Most leaders are not going to do it. So there's so much going on. This is maybe, I don't know, 20% of everything that's happening in the leadership life of an entrepreneur. Right. So Tom, if most of the actual leaders are born leaders, then how can leaders who are not born leaders learn about these things? Is leadership something that can be learned 
in business schools, in uh, in companies by being the topmost or the topmost person in the company or in any department. How or what would you like to tell these leaders who are trying to learn about leadership and then they also have to learn about effective leadership? How does it work? Is it is it workable? Is it not workable? It is like, you know what, a content copy created by a human and a content copy created by artificial intelligence. They lack the feeling. The mm. human has feeling. So acquired leadership skills, will they develop, will they develop or have the same leadership feeling like a born one? How do you see that? Where does these tools and techniques fit in here? Can it fit in here rightly? Because in today's time, a lot of people are suffering from imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Is that one of the reasons or is it something else? How do you address this? Because this, this world is going different and people are expecting a lot, a uh, lot of happiness from the corporate life that they live in, yes. either employees or even the leaders themselves. So I don't know if there are people who are born leaders. There may be a couple of them. I do believe that there are some people who should never become leaders. The, like, like instead of 10% of us being born leaders, I believe there's maybe 10 or 20% of us who are, are born to be non-leaders, basically. But the, the rest of us, for various reasons, but the rest of us, I believe that, that we can learn to lead. I have learned to lead and to become a leader. And I think there are so many skills that are just like typing. You can learn to type and you can learn to draw and you may not be a natural artist, but, but people can learn to draw a tree or an apple or whatever. And it's the same with playing the piano and it's the same with envisioning vision or defining a mission and a strategy. Nobody learns how to build a group strategy. There's a great book by um good strategy bad strategy is the is the is the title of the book by professor rumold he wrote a follow-up book the crux that's insanely useful and pretty much no leader has read those two books i can guarantee you because i asked them but but you can learn to build a strategy and in the same way you can learn very practical tips to work with your team just to give you one very practical example i love the idea of a waiting for list it's an idea by David Allen of Getting Things Done fame. And he says everything that you delegate or that you order, or when you ask somebody an important question, you just write that down, two, three words. Um, for instance, uh, Jude, budget 224. I know what I wrote down. I only need the three words to in a week or two weeks to read that and to know what it's all about. Once I've received that budget from her, I cross it off. So now I have a list, a waiting for list with everything that I'm waiting for instead of my subconscious mind trying to figure all of the, to, to keep track of all of that. So I'm in the spa or taking a sauna, uh, taking a shower or being on a bicycle somewhere trying to relax. And suddenly my subconscious mind says, where's the budget? Did we already get the budget? Where's the budget? Budget, budget, budget. And so it, it's driving me crazy. And as soon as I started to work with this waiting for list concept, which is a, you can implement this in 10 minutes, right? Pen and paper on your table. That's basically what you need. And then you need to try it out if it works for you. Nobody teaches you those things in school or in college. But once you have a couple of these very powerful techniques, you will find in working with your team that no promise from one of your team members to you gets under the carpet again, that falls off the table because it's all there in your waiting for list. And now you have a entirely different relationship with your team. It's simple things like that, that may not make you a natural born leader, but that can be really effective in helping you become a much, much better leader than most leaders around you. Right, Tom, right. You are a leadership expert for entrepreneurs. Yes. Now, several things here is that a lot of small businesses, those entrepreneurs, how can they become effective leaders if they, they withdraw themselves from their teams? 
they have only those working out is it possible for a small business person or an entrepreneur secondly you also talked about that most entrepreneurs should decrease their comfort zone if we take about entrepreneurs they need to carry along those founders uh, entrepreneurs need to carry along their team especially in the initial stages in the larger leadership front when big bigger workplaces the whole complaint is that you know leaders are getting aloof day by day and here you are talking about you know that decreasing that entrepreneurs should leaders should decrease their comfort zone how does it come together here because uh, is it going to help the problem or is it or is it going to aggravate it how should what should people make out of this suggestion that you suggest to so many entrepreneurs and in a larger sense to the leadership wherever they are in the private firms or in the bigger firms what a great question i love your questions man you're awesome i have never had anybody asking me these questions i'm i'm serious jay this is i love it so you make it hard on me that's good right so let's start with the 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 small businesses michael gerber in his wonderful book e myth describes a, uh, has a story about a woman and she loves to bake cakes and she's really really tremendously good at baking cakes and her family and friends and everybody tells her you need to sh open a bakery shop and start baking cakes to make money so that's what she does because that's what everybody tells her that she should do so there she goes no plan no nothing she opens a bakery and of course it goes really well because her cakes are fabulous everybody wants to have her cakes now she starts hiring people and that's where the real trouble starts and I believe that's the truth for many entrepreneurs, including me. We love to do our job. We love to be an expert. We love to be to have a technique that we enjoy. Might be software development, might be baking cakes, anything. We start to build a team and suddenly we realize that these people are not as motivated as we are. And they may not be as smart as we think we are. And they may have different priorities. And they definitely don't oversee the entire business like we do. So there, there's a pretty big difference between the people that we hire to be on our teams and ourselves. And now we need to go and start to manage. And most of these entrepreneurs that start as being a technician in whatever shape or form, they hate doing management and if we test these people we can point out exactly why so if you if you take my call you look at my colby test results you can immediately say like this guy hates management and that's true i hate it so that's why i optimized it so it takes me as as less time as possible i believe that the next step that gerber mentions is a great step which is where you introduce management into your teams without doing it yourself and it might be you need to hire an office manager, as simple as that. It might be that you need to work, start working with a virtual assistant for a couple of hours a week. Could be a small experiment. Could be that you hire a managing director when the company becomes a little bigger. But what that does for you is it puts somebody who enjoys managing people in the place of the manager, which is good for that person because he or she enjoys her job. Um, the team enjoys this person much better because suddenly somebody is really taking care of them because that's what this person does. And you grow a little, I don't know if higher is the right word, but, but, but visually I see it as like a little higher and you grow into the role of the entrepreneur. What's the task, the main task of an entrepreneur? I believe if it is to take something that is of less value, and change or modify it so it becomes much more valuable. And that could be something like you take sand, you run it to your factory and out comes an Intel PC chip. That's like adding value. And I believe that entrepreneurs who are running small businesses and who have not made the step to grow from management to entrepreneur, they often struggle with a lack of time to think about this value creation process. They struggle with a lack of time of thinking through their business models, thinking where is the market going? Now artificial intelligence is coming up. How is that going to impact my business? How is it going to impact our, our culture? How is it going to impact our market? 
if you are running the daily operations and you are running your team, you're managing your team, which you hate doing, and then you're answering your phone all the time that anybody else has a question, and you start your morning with checking your email on your phone, which is basically checking the to-do lists of other people, right? That's what email is. Those are the to-do items from other people. You are kind of screwed because you have no time, you have no energy left, you probably don't have the creativity to really think about the work that you as an entrepreneur should be doing, which is creating more value. Right, right. You you have given a lot of very good answers, uh, Tom, and a lot of solutions for uh, entrepreneurs, especially in the, on the leadership front. You also talk about the six words that and, and want to understand what, what are those six words and what makes them so powerful. So this has to do with uh, shrinking your comfort zone. Instead of you as an entrepreneur doing everything, and especially if you founded the business at the beginning, you probably did everything. So you can probably argue that you know everything best, better than your team members. I don't, I, I oftentimes I think that's correct. Now we need to make sure that you stop doing everything because we need you to focus on this value creation process, on business models, on marketing, on, on figuring out where the market is going next. So my trick to do that are these six words. I don't know how that works. So I open a spreadsheet. I want to do a simple analysis of some form of whatever process. I see that it has not been updated for the last two weeks. I tell myself, oh, I'll just update it. But as my mother-in-law used to say, the word just is a very, very, very frightening, <laughs> scary word. I'll just update it myself. So instead of going to the backend server and trying to update it and figuring out that the SQL isn't working correctly, and I'm like 45 minutes later, instead of doing that, I call uh, Susan and I tell her, hey, I got this spreadsheet. It needs to be updated. I don't know how that works. And I might even use my quotation mark fingers in the air if I want to, to be co completely honest. And I ask her to do it. And so shrinking your comfort zone for me works really well when you describe your new work in one simple sentence. I've, I've used for myself words on paper for the longest time. And words on paper could be words on a computer screen. It could be words talking in a podcast interview. It could be words writing a new uh, training course. It could be anything, but it's not administration. It's not planning. It's not project management. My marketing team uses a uh, teamwork for project management. I do not have a login to that system. I don't know how that works. Right, right, Tom. I, you, you have again, as I said, you have shared so many great uh, tips and about about leadership, about effective leadership, about great entrepreneurship. But to know more, they will have to come to you, and especially people who would like to connect with you for engaging you professionally. So, what's the best way they can do that? I share many of my tips on TomSharp.blog. B L O G. That's also where you can find my Twitter handle and, and other social media accounts. And I'm, I'm in the process of sharing everything I know with as many people as I can find to, who want to listen to me. So um, there's some really good tips up there already. Wonderful. Wonderful. With this, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you, Jay.